What's up guys and welcome to another eBay Miniature Rescue. Today we're going to paint this Gloom Spite Gets Loon Boss. To keep our colors nice and bright we're going to start with Vallejo Surface Primer White. We're going to start laying down some color with Moon Yellow, focusing on the helmet, the main weapon, and the tip of the large mushroom that he's standing on. Using Gory Red, I'm going to finish off that mushroom and give a nice blend into that yellow. A uh, good tip for workflow is if you know you're going to be painting another color after that you can mix with say electric blue then you can start with the first color and then mix it in and then get your secondary color and be fairly consistent if you're pretty much always mixing 50-50 then you're going to end up with the same purple every time. So it's always something to think about so you don't have to clean out your airbrush constantly. Coming in with P3's Menoth White Base, I'm going to spray the undersides of the mushrooms and the ones on his back. Coming in with Screamer Pink, I add that to the pot of the white with a little bit of flow improver. The Screamer Pink pigment is pretty strong, so it pretty much takes over. But I take care of a little bit of that big red mushroom just on the bottom, and then the weird little snail guy. That cool little guy, whatever it is, like octopus snail thing. This also marks the beginning of the ever-changing mushroom color on his back. I really couldn't pick. They change. That, that happened. With Lead Belcher, I'm going to block in all of the metallic armor. Using Strachan Green, I base coat all of the skin. Mournfang Brown for the weapon handle. That pretty much takes care of all of the base coating, so it's time to move on to washes and then on to the highlighting and finishing stages. Our first wash is Cassandor Yellow for the weapon and the helmet. Thank you. 
Using watered down seraphim sepia, I do the undersides of the mushrooms. Athonian camo shade for the skin. With watered down Druchi Violet, I start doing the top of the large mushroom and progressively as it dries, I use less water just to give it a little bit more vibrance. I use Drakenhof Nightshade on pretty much the rest of the mushrooms just to give a little more character to each one. So at this point, I think we've hit a good tabletop standard. All the washes are there. There's a few different techniques. So you could use this and feel pretty good about it. But from here on out, we're just going to take everything one step further and do some highlighting and just a little bit more detail work. Using rust gray, I'm going to start edging the large mushroom. Using Minoth White Highlight, I'm going to mix in a little bit of that into the rust gray and go back and start highlighting just a little bit finer on the same areas. I'm also going to use the same mixture to highlight some of the smaller mushrooms and put some little dots on there. And then for probably the fifth time, repaint this middle mushroom. Now with pretty much pure Menoth White Highlight, I'm going to dot the spots on this larger mushroom and then I'm going to go into uh, the underside of each of the mushrooms and just edge highlight some of the sharper areas.
Using Menoth White Base, I'm going to go over all of the deformation areas on the weapon and the helmet and just highlight each of those little cracks. You could dry brush this and it would pretty much get you the same result. Uh, it's a little more messy that way. Uh, you tend to hit flatter areas that you don't necessarily want to. But it does give a pretty nice effect and if you're going for something quick and you want to paint this quick and not have to edge and line everything, then that's a good alternative. Speaking of dry brushing, we're going to use P3's Radiant Platinum to go over all of the silver armor. With Rhinox Hide, I'm going to chip the yellow armor, and this is kind of the first step in a two-step process. You start with Rhinox Hide and you kind of stipple it onto those lines. You still want those white lines showing because, you know, you did all that work, right? Um, and then you come back later with a silver and do it just a little bit smaller within the Rhinox Hide on select more worn areas to give you that worn away paint look. After hitting some of those Rhinox hide spots with Radiant Platinum, I go back onto the blade and just pull from the, the central area out to kind of sharpen that edge. Using Scrag Brown, I go over the weapon handle and just put some lines over some of the raised edges. Using Cadian Flesh Tone, I bring in a little bit of that skin color onto the hands by dotting the knuckles. And that pretty much does it for the Loon Boss. Um, it's a pretty great model. I really like these new Gloom Spud Git releases if you can't tell. Um, this model in particular has an awesome pose, it's got a really cool base, um, it's not super expensive even though it's a singular model and those tend to be a little bit more, but it has a place you know, on the battlefield and just as a nice showpiece to have. It's got a lot of different color going on, a lot of opportunities to use techniques to make it look really nice. So thanks for joining me on this week's eBay Miniature Rescues. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.